after a very uh, interesting uh, uh, talk we uh, will move on to a very uh, basic topic that is antibiotic uh, stewardship we'll be uh, emphasizing on uh, the antibiotic stewardship in the icu so as you know uh, the antimicrobial resistance is a uh, evolving threat in uh, uh, medical practice and uh, maybe by uh, end of 2050 the major cause of uh, death will be uh, uh, because of infections with these uh, uh, resistant organisms so aim of any antimicrobial stewardship uh, program will uh, depend on or will uh, mainly emphasize on uh, optimized uh, antimicrobial uh, use and uh, reducing the development and spread of uh, antimicrobial uh, resistance and again by doing this thing uh, save patients lives and uh, healthcare cost so this will be the aim of any uh, anti antimicrobial uh, stewardship program so the main points to remember here are uh, avoid antibiotics when it is not needed like in uh, viral infections etc prescribe the access antibiotics when uh, uh, sufficient and uh, use newer antibiotics only when uh, necessary and uh, avoid using those uh, antibiotics uh, empirically uh, uh, when possible and the six main concepts of antibiotic use in uh, critically ill patients are uh, impact on uh, bacterial resistance then uh, risk stratification of patients and then uh, choosing the antibiotic whether to go with a, a narrow spectrum or a broad spectrum the combination of antibiotic in which situation to be used the drug optimization uh, depending on the patient's other uh, organ failures the site of infection etc de-escalation depending on uh, the fine tuning of the diagnosis or after getting the proper culture report and uh, restricting the duration of uh, antibiotic use to the shortest time possible so the initial uh, inadequate therapy that may be the cause of uh, death in ma uh, majority of sepsis patients so an in inadequate uh, uh, therapy is defined as an antibiotic which is not covering uh, the infecting pathogen and uh, dosing when it is not adequate and uh, the antibiotic which you have selected is not having proper uh, tissue penetration or concentration at the site of infection and combination therapy was uh, not used uh, when it is uh, indicated so this is the way usually a clinician uh, encounter uh, like a sepsis so or an an infection so we have a, a, a like we have to go with a proper clinical assessment so that includes the initial uh, uh, evaluation then based on the clinical assessment you uh, go ahead with the diagnostic workup then you uh, decide the therapeutic decisions then we will have to educate the patient as well so then later on uh, during the subsequent evaluation or during the subsequent days we will have to do the clinical reassessment like whether the patients are responding it properly either based on the clinical criteria or based on other diagnostic criteria as the previous speaker has already mentioned then we will have to review the data what is the trend in uh, the organ functions and again other lab parameters then based on the cultures or the response we will have to modify the antimicrobial uh, agents as well and the cat categories of antibiotic use can be like uh, a prophylactic use an empiric use this is the one which we majority of the time we uh, uh, go for then based on the proper culture and sensitivity report you uh, go with the definitive therapy so the prophylactic antibiotic uh, uh, use uh, majority of the time it is uh, restricted to uh, surgical prophylaxis i'm not going into the details about the surgical prophylaxis but as you are uh, well aware we don't have to uh, extend the antibiotic uh, usage for days together uh, like a pre incision uh, antibiotic usage will be enough and if the if there is a huge blood loss or if the surgical time is prolonged we will have to repeat the uh, the antibiotic dose again then we have the empiric uh, antibiotic use depending on the site of infection and again your uh, the the sensitivity pattern or the uh, antimicrobial uh, the pattern or antibiogram in your unit you can select empirically like if a patient is coming with a community acute pneumonia or a community acute uh, uh, urinary tract infection or like if a patient is already in a hospital on antibiotic developing a secondary infection so you should have a pro like an empiric uh, 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 you uh, empiric line of uh, drugs uh, how to use that 
and uh, like as i've already told the definitely treatment depending on the culture and sensitivity even if you start the patient on a higher spectrum of antibiotic after getting the proper culture and sensitivity report you can either narrow down or sometimes we will have to uh, uh, like uh, uh, escalate the, uh, the the uh, the the spectrum of antibiotic what we are using and an optimal antimicrobial uh, drug prescription also involves the proper uh, selection of antibiotic the dose should be correct the route should be correct and the duration also should be uh, proper and the drug of choice of, uh, of the antibiotic depends on the many situations one thing the severity like uh, uh, the how severe the infection is whether the patient is having the organ failure hypotension etc if the patient is coming with a severe hypotension you will have to sometimes use a, a carbapenem directly uh, or like if the patient has already been in the hospital received previous antibiotic <coughs> sorry then we will have to think about adding polymyxin or some other higher spectrum antibiotic source of anti uh, infection is also uh, uh, very very important because whenever you are choosing an antibiotic the antibiotic what you are choosing should be having a proper concentration at the source and depending on the source you should be able to uh, uh, have an idea about what organism you are going to treat suppose if you are treating a urinary tract infection majority of the time it may be an e coli like if you are uh, like treating a, a chest infection uh, sometimes it may be an acinetobacter klebsiella etc then uh, uh, like likely pathogens and uh, whenever possible source control is also uh, very very important and depending on the source like uh, if uh, you you are uh, targeting the lung the antibiotic what you are using uh, should be having uh, 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 an excellent concentration in the epithelial uh, lining fluid the same way uh, if you are treating a bone infection the drug uh, should have a better concentration in the uh, serum and the drugs like uh, uh, beta lactam vancomycin etc will be having poor concentration in the bone uh, tissues the same way uh, uh, lipophilic drugs uh, crosses the csf uh, very easily so whenever you treat a, a central nervous system infection you will have to select a drug which is uh, lipophilic and again uh, depending on uh, uh, like different uh, uh, source of infection you should have an, a basic idea about which drug will be having a better concentration in that tissue for example you can see if you are treating a, a prostate infection like uh, a majority of the antibiotic may not be having a proper concentration in the prostate but drugs like fipronil tazobactam or like uh, quinolones uh, or uh, like ceftran etc will be having excellent uh, concentration same way the biliary tract infection when you are treating the drugs like uh, piperacillin and tazobactam carbapenem cefepirazone sulbactam etc will be having uh, good concentration i'm not going into the full details about uh, each drugs and uh, each uh, tissue concentration but as i've already told some drugs as you can see will be having excellent concentration in the cns some of them will be having excellent concentration in the epithelial lining fluid so depending on that you will have to choose an antibiotic so knowing uh, the 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 source of infection and choosing the antibiotic based on the source is also very very uh, important this is again uh, a different antibiotic and again uh, uh, the source of uh, sorry uh, the concentration of that antibiotic like uh, linosolid will be having a poor urinary concentration so it may not be a good uh, choice in treating a urinary tract infection same way the polymyxin b will be having poor excretion in the urine and that may not be a, cho a good choice when you are treating a urinary tract uh, uh, infection uh, i'm not going into each drug and uh, each uh, uh, tissue concentration but as i've already told you should have a basic idea about uh, the tissue concentration of different antibiotic and uh, the different uh, uh, the the, uh, the the source and which antibiotic to be uh, selected in that drug resistance is also very very important like if you are getting a community acquired infection uh, sometimes uh, the chance of drug resistance will be uh, very minimal like if you are treating a community acquired uh, bacterial pneumonia a combination of a ceftriaxone with an atypical coverage with a uh, macrolide antibiotic will be uh, enough but if you are uh, like treating an infection which is already healthcare associated we will have to uh, cover for uh, other organisms with uh, uh, some uh, like a blb like combination or uh, uh, a carbapenem so a recent antimicrobial use uh, then local uh, uh, the cumulative susceptibility data all these things are 
important and uh, the risk factors for uh, mdr pathogens like as i've already told the previous uh, antibiotic exposure then the previous hospitalization the immunocompromised status etc the chances of mdr pathogens will be high so in that situation you will have to uh, 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 think about uh, uh, like uh, widening your spectra the same way the mrsa infection as such is very very less in indian icus so we will have to uh, restrict the mrsa coverage only to uh, some uh, selected uh, situations which i have uh, already uh, mentioned here like antimicrobial treatment during the prior 90 days or treatment in a unit uh, where the mrsa prevalence uh, is more than uh, 20% among uh, the staff or is isolates etc otherwise in all uh, situations empirically we don't have to cover for mrsa the patient factors are also important like uh, whether the patients are having any uh, any uh, allergic to any particular drugs and again renal or liver dysfunction if the patients are having a renal dysfunction or liver dysfunction we will have to uh, modify antimicrobial uh, uh, usage based on that and before starting the antibiotic itself uh, or like uh, uh, or uh, in the early hours itself we will have to get a proper uh, cultures from the site of infection uh, so that we can uh, get a proper sensitivity report and then we can de-escalate or fine-tune the uh, antibiotic uh, usage and during the re-evaluation after uh, starting an antibiotic based on all these uh, the methods which have already told then we will have to opti uh, like optimize antimicrobial use based on the microbiologic data then we have to assess the spectrum of uh, the, the antibiotic what we are using the check for uh, adverse uh, uh, effects and evaluate the route and duration of therapy uh, especially uh, depending on the uh, infection and this is how you uh, usually get a culture report as you can see this is a urine culture where e coli is grown so whenever an e coli is grown we usually we uh, see whether it is sensitive to uh, ceftriaxone or cefotaxime so if it is resistant then you look at uh, dlbli combination like piperacillin tazobactam or cefoparazone salbactam so if it is uh, uh, sen uh, uh, resistant to uh, ceftriaxone and sensitive to uh, uh, piptazo that means it's an esbl producer if it is resistant to that also then you look at uh, the carbapenem sensitivity or if it is uh, resistant to that as well then obviously we will have to uh, think about other options like uh, uh, if it is an e coli uh, ceftacidim avibactam and uh, if you are going for ceftacidim avibactam we will have to see whether it is a uh, like uh, uh, metallobetalactamase or any uh, other uh, mode of uh, resistance then uh, like uh, adverse events which i have already told uh, which we will have to uh, check so the principles of antimicrobial uh, uh, the prescribing are we have to we have to use the narrowest spectrum uh, required the dosage should be appropriate to the size and type of infection the duration should be minimized and ensure uh, monotherapy in most cases we don't have to go for uh, the combination therapy in majority of the cases a uh, urine analysis interpretation is also very very important uh, don't think that the patient is having uh, severe uti uh, high power uh, field a urine examination is showing a pastels of 30 to 40 it doesn't mean that the patient is having a, a, a uti you will have to uh, go with uh, uh, like urinary culture or other clinical signs of infection or usually the uh, the urine culture high power field will be showing a numerous pus cells and again if the patients are asymptomatic or if the patients are already on catheter uh, having a numerous pus cell uh, pus cells uh, doesn't uh, uh, need an antibiotic therapy uh, always and uh, blood cultures also whenever you are taking blood cultures you have to take at least two sets of blood cultures one set will be one aerobic and one anaerobic and in both bottles you will have to put at least uh, 10 ml blood as you can see in the diagram in two sets your yield will be somewhere around 94 percentage which you can increase up to 97 percentage with the uh, three sets because of the cost issues majority of the time in indian icus we go with the uh, two sets of blood cultures but one set will not yield you uh, much positivity you can see the difference 73 percent versus uh, 94 percentage and uh, uh, when the patients are stable eating able to absorb uh, or if uh, the there is an oral option we can uh, use that option as well so you should have a uh, uh, proper understanding about 
oral bioavailability of uh, antimicrobial agents. Uh, like you can see the drugs like amoxicillin, uh, clindamycin, or uh, the cunilones, doxycycline, linosolid, etc. They are having excellent oral bioavailability. So even uh, you can uh, use uh, these drugs to treat uh, a serious uh, uh, infection. And there are evolving data even we can use these uh, uh, oral agents even in treating uh, infective uh, endo uh, endocarditis. Then the PKPD, I think uh, uh, one more speaker is there. So we'll be talking on uh, uh, the PKPD uh, of different uh, drugs in critically ill patients. As far as antibiotic uh, uh, are concerned, there are a concentration depending, uh, dependent antibiotic and a time dependent antibiotic. In a concentration dependent antibiotic, like in the diagram, you have to target for a maximum concentration. That's why you go for a bolus dosing. In time dependent antibiotic, you need uh, more time above, above, uh, above MIC. That is why uh, majority of the beta lactam antibiotic, we give it as an extended infusion. And, uh, uh, and this is another basic concept you should understand about uh, the, the antimicrobial resistance and the prophylaxis. So you can see uh, like if you are uh, like you, uh, you are having a population of many uh, susceptible uh, bacteria here and there will be very uh, few resistant uh, uh, bacteria. So even if suppose if the like this is uh, all susceptible to uh, uh, carbapenem and this are only very uh, few uh, resistant bacteria. So unnecessary if you are uh, uh, like starting the patient on carbapenem on day one itself thinking that is a VIP or VVIP. Uh, like in surgical uh, infection so you are putting the, uh, the more pressure on that uh, uh, that uh, group of organisms and antibiotics kill or stop the growth of susceptible uh, uh, bacteria and the other resistant bacteria will select out so finally you will uh, end up in uh, like uh, selecting out a group of organism which is resistant to the anti initial antibiotic which you have unnecessarily given so ultimately you will uh, uh, landing up uh, in uh, 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 organism completely resistant to carbapenem. That is why you use a narrow spectrum antibiotic whenever it is uh, required and don't use unnecessarily uh, the prophylactic antibiotic in uh, uh, ICU uh, settings. And uh, to have a basic knowledge about uh, the different organisms, as you are well aware, we have gram positive, gram negative, then we have anaerobes, and then we have atypical organisms. In uh, gr uh, and there are uh, a few intracellular organisms as well. In gram positive, we have uh, having uh, uh, like streptococcus. Then in staph, we are having methicillin sensitive, methicillin resistant, and uh, 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 the corns. Along with that, we have enterococcus. The gram negative, we have non fermenters like uh, Acinetobacter, then uh, Pseudomonas, etc. Then we have Enterobacteriaceae. In that, mainly we will be having E. coli, Klebsiella, Proteus, etc and uh, other organisms like uh, H. influenza. Then uh, in atypical, we will be having uh, Legionella, Mycoplasma, Chlamydia, and intracellular organisms like uh, uh, Rickettsia, Coxella, etc. So this is a, uh, the basic uh, the overview about different antibiotics. So whenever you are choosing an antibiotic, you should have a, a clear-cut idea what is the spectrum of antibiotic which you are using and which all organism you are going to cover. And we have anaerobic organisms also. In that anaerobics, again, we have uh, gram positive, gram negative, and we have uh, C. diff in that. So like if you are uh, covering an atypical organism, we can either go with uh, acetromycin, levofloxacin, or doxycycline. That is why <coughs> in a community acute pneumonia, when you are uh, uh, like uh, choosing an empiric antibiotic along with a beta lactam, you can use either uh, azithromycin, levofloxacin, or doxy to cover these uh, uh, atypical organisms. And uh, the surgical uh, the prophylaxis, which I've already told, I'm not going into the detail. Just uh, go back and read the uh, the surgical uh, prophylaxis the recommendation by IDSA or the the other uh, surgical organizations like uh, different uh, uh, surgeries which is antimicrobial uh, agent uh, 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 suggested and what is the dose and when you have to uh, repeat the dose. I have already told like if there is a uh, uh, like uh, extensive blood loss or prolonged surgery, we will have to use that. And uh, the antibiotic prophylaxis can also be divided into like uh, uh, prophylaxis basically for clean and clean contaminated and uh, antimicrobial treatment is basically when there is a contaminated or a uh, infected wound. So in prophylaxis, you don't have to extend the dose, but if it is for the treatment, like in contaminated or an infected wound, definitely you will have to uh, extend the usage. 
now uh, different uh, common antibiotic and their spectrum like if you are going with a uh, like first generation cephalosporin like sephiro uh, sephiroxine it is base basically having uh, the gram positive coverage and a few uh, gram negative coverage as well but if you are uh, coming with uh, a second generation like sephiroxine it is having both gram positive and a minimal uh, gram negative that is why in a surgical prophylaxis we either prefer cefasolin or we go with uh, cefiroxine but if you uh, go with the third generation agents like ceftriaxone or cefotaxime both will be having uh, almost uh, similar spectra so it will be mainly having uh, the gram negative coverage and uh, gram positive coverage mainly for strep so if you are uh, treating a strep you can use uh, ceftriaxone uh, as well and uh, it is having a minimal uh, anaerobic coverage uh, but not having a typical coverage or not having extensive uh, gram negative coverage so this is again the cefasolin i've already told uh, the first generation which is having mainly gram positive then uh, the cefotaxime uh, and ceftriaxone which is uh, which will be covering only non esbn uh, or, or uh, organisms and the esbl will not be uh, covered so this is a, the 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 which one uh, which i have already told the surgical prophylaxis uh, recommendation depending on uh, uh, different surgeries and you can see majority of the situation situation you can use uh, cefasolin or cefiroxime the problem with the cefasolin are you don't have a, a good brand available nowadays that's why uh, a few people uh, prefer to use uh, cefiroxime uh, then uh, there is there is always a debate between a static versus sidal and even as undergraduates and postgraduates we were told that we have to uh, use sidal agents whenever we are treating uh, a, a severe infection but uh, we don't have a strong evidence to say that the the static drugs are inferior to uh, sidal even in uh, uh, severe infections and the the penicillin allergy is another issue like whenever the patient is giving an history of penicillin allergy it may be to some additives used in that drug so that is why uh, in all the situations you don't have to uh, differ using other cephalosporins you can uh, 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 like try other sensitive uh, like uh, try uh, challenging with other cephalosporins you don't have to go with uh, curelons in uh, all the situations and avoid duplicative uh, anaerobic coverage so majority of the antibiotic what we are using like in the in this diagram as you can see the penicillin is having an ex uh, excellent anaerobic coverage amoxicillin moxclaw piptazo uh, uh, meropenem or carbapenem are all, all having excellent anaerobic coverage so there is no need for adding an additional anaerobic coverage by adding clindamycin or metronidazole uh, to these agents for a uh, like better anaerobic coverage so that is not uh, required whether it's a hydram double infection or it's a uh, like a, a chest infection and only situation where you have to uh, add metronidazole may be an amebiasis or like a, a, a pelvic inflammatory disease with trichomonas uh, vaginalis then we have to reassess the antibiotic uh, therapy then uh, asymptomatic bacteria should not be treated which i have already told you have to use a shortest spectrum of uh, antimicrobial uh, uh, agents uh, sorry shortest duration uh, like majority of the situations 5 to 7 days will be uh, enough and uh, whenever we are having a, a suspected bacterial infection you start with an empiric treatment you continue it with uh, uh, 1 to 2 days then based on the culture report or your proper diagnosis we uh, we can uh, modify the antimicrobial agents what we are using thank you so much